Hello everyone, this is Mugundan Raghavan and today we are going to discuss how to make the self-filling in Serenium Java. If you ask what is basically self-filling, when you have the automation, obviously we are working with the web elements and its locators. However, in reality, we might have the broken locators or it might be changed or it might be due to the delay of the browser loading. Whatever might be the reason, we will have the broken locators due to which we might face the no such element exception, even though your functionality does not have any changes in it. To have the robust automation, especially if you do the end-to-end -end testing, self-filling is the future that we all need that. In market, there are some tools, paid tools especially, will have the self-filling, but most of us might be using the Selenium Java from the years. For that reason, we are going to see today how to implement the self-filling in Selenium Java. Let's jump into the video. Let's go to our topic. Before going to that, we will just go to the sample website. Let's imagine you have this dummy website, sasdemo.com, and you want to log in. When you do the manual activities, especially manual testing, we will do everything by visual appearance, which means you are the manual tester, you will be seeing whether it is applicable, whether it is present, whether it is enabled, everything will be done by the manual tester. However, in automation, everything goes through the code. When you go through the code, you are not directly interacting as a visual way. You might be interacting like a DOM structure. Basically, you will identify each and every element by using unique locator. These locators, especially XPath, CSS, ID, tag name, what not. We are not going to very deep into the locators in this session. We are going to understand this automation happens by identifying the each element by its locator. Now, when you have the locator, it's possible that when you run it, it might be broken or might be changed due to which you will be getting the errors. But what is self-healing? Self-healing actually matters when you have multiple locators for the same element. Whenever the primary locator fails, the secondary or alternate locators will be considered by itself, by the code itself. But in normal automation, we will get the error. We will go to the code. We will see if that is the no such element exception. Then we will try to find the locator which were mentioned inside the code. Obviously, it will give the error or it will give no elements to search. Then in that case, again, you will generate the no locator. It looks very simple if you have the very simple test. In the end-to-end -end testing, it will totally break your flow. Again, you need to start from scratch. Or it will give the false negative, which means that even though there is no functionality change, your automation tells it is failing. To avoid this scenario, we are going to use the self-filling in the Java Selenium itself. There are a lot of tools, as I mentioned, some of us might be using the, the same concept, having multiple locators and looking with the alternate locator when the primary locator fails. Whereas some advanced tools might be using the AI mechanism. But at this point of time, using AI in automation needs more rework and more analysis because AI might be reading some other information as well. In project also, we might be having challenge about the security of the AA or license of the AA and integration with the, the Java Selenium test suits. Considering all the challenges, we are going to see today how to use the multiple locators in a very simple way to implement the self-healing. And this code is just an example or draft version. However, it can be extensible by providing multiple usable or let's see, utility functions. Let's go to understand this code. Imagine you will directly go to the main method. You are using the web driver manager to set up the Chrome driver, which will take care about your Chrome driver setup. Then after you are creating the driver setup. Now you are using the Chrome driver. Then I am creating the object for the self-healing Selenium, which is the declare itself. This is the class self-healing Selenium. Now driver.get, I am going to the sasdemo.com, the same dummy website or the practice site. Now I'm going to click on the username. However, before to that, I should be having the primary locator alternative locators. 
primary locator as a string variable, whereas alternative locator as a string of array, where I will be having alternate locators for the same username. Here you can see, this is the primary locator I'm looking for that and alternative locators pointing to the same web element. Then I am calling the self feeling object dot find element with retry. Here I am passing driver, primary locator and alternative locators. If you are having already existing Selenium framework, you are not going to change anything. You are just adding this class and trying to call the method find element with retry. And you are passing existing driver and your locators, maybe in the string array format. This method will be enabled or this method will be responsible to return the element considering your primary and alternative locators. If the element is written without null, then you will be giving the click that element and send keys as a username. Otherwise, element not found even with alternative locators. Now the core part will be under the find element with retry. Here you can see, basically we are putting existing element as null. Then we are trying to find the element by the primary locator. Considering for simplicity, I am using only the XPath. So directly I am using all the locator primary and alternative in the XPath format. Now again, you can put the difference of locators, type of locator such as the XPath, ID and so on. But for simplicity, we will look only for the concept. So I am looking for the primary locator. In worst case, you will be getting the exception where you don't have that element present. Might be the different reason. That's the reason I am putting the exception here. And whenever the exception happens, you are just printing the message, primary locator fail and trying with self filling with alternate locators. Now you know that alternative locator is a string array. We are iterating each and every locator. For example, you are taking the first alternate locator by finding that alternate locator. Then you are messaging alternate locator is chosen and worked in case if it is valid. And if it is valid, again, you don't need to go through everything from the alternative locators. You can break there itself. However, even if the alternate locator is breaking or it is the broken locator, in that case, you will go to the next iteration. Before going to the next iteration, you will be catching that you will be mentioning alternate locator, whichever the locator you used, that will be shown here and it will be telling uh, alternate locator is chosen and failed update the locators. Now I'm just giving the system out dot println message or error message. But in reality, if you extend this class, you might be writing to the log files about your tracking of alternate locators so that you can update in the later point. Let's jump into the topic. Now, again, if it is failing for the alternate locator also, you will be going to the next iteration after writing to the system message. Then you will be doing the same thing. In worst case, even all the alternate locator fails, which is the rare case, then you will be returning the element which is null. Then obviously in your code, you are checking whether it is not null, then only you will do the actions. Otherwise, you will be telling you tried with primary locator and all the alternative locators till it is failing. Let's try with this. First of all, I will tell so this is the valid locator and it is the good locator, which means that it will work. Let's execute and see. Okay, you have seen a standard user has been entered and there is no error message because primary locator itself has worked. Let's break that purposefully adding some invalid content into that. So obviously primary locator now will not work because there is no ID called username iPhone iPhone name iPhone broken. And after saving this, let me close the previous one to avoid confusion. Let's execute one more time. still it's able to do that. And you can see primary locator, whichever we have given username iPhone broken, the primary locator fell trying with self feeling with alternate locators. Then the first alternate locator has been used and it was success. Let's break the even the first alternate locator broken and save it. Let's try it again. Before to that, I will close it again and again rerun.
still it is using. Here you can see again the primary locator failed and alternate locator has been chosen. Even the first alternate locator has been failed. Then you are getting the second alternate locator has been chosen and even that has been worked. So that means that it will go through all the alternative locators. Very rare case you will find even all the alternate locator also not working in case if you have not written your alternative locators in a correct way. Now coming to the topic. Here the main question is who will write multiple alternative locators for the same element? Is it a lengthy process? Of course, if you have the huge application for every element, if you want to write at least five web elements or five locators, it will be the lengthy process. How to make our job easy? There are more alternatives. So based on your project, you can use some alternatives. Let's show something. So the first alternative could be write a prompt to your, for example, let's go to your chat GPT or any AI tool. Let's imagine I want to inspect this. So directly rather than writing by ourselves, I will copy that the entire web element. So copy element. Then if you go there, you will be having the entire element, something like this. Then you will be writing the nice prompt to the chat GPT or board. Probably I use chat GPT. Create five unique web element XPath locators for the below element and need all XPaths in comma separated. Just the same template, only the element you will change it. Let's go to the chat of chat GPT and ask the same question. Yes, it is giving all the X path, but I need in comma separated, however I mentioned. So let's ask the same thing, need all in single line. Comma separated. Here you can see all the locators has been given here. Just show the output. Here you can see all the locators. So you can choose any one of that as a primary and others as a alternative locators. Otherwise, if you have the plugin something called yes, selector sub. So in you when you have the selector subs, even this will help you to get the multiple locators. For example, let's go to here. Let's imagine I want to get the multiple locators here. Just click on that. And here you can see, even it will generate multiple locators for the same web element. Okay, let me just click on this and click on the username. Here you can see the relative XPath, CSS selector, index XPath, JS path. Maybe we are not using JS path. Maybe ID, name, class name, it's okay. And whatever you want. So basically it will also give multiple locators for the same web element. Either you can use this kind of plugins if you are sure that it is safety or otherwise you can use the chat GPT or in worst case you can write your alternative locators by yourself. But in the long term it will give the very robust test automation where your test cases will, will not fail actually. It will try to use all the alternative locators and obviously you will write to the log files or to any mechanism so that you will come to know your primary locator has been failed. So this is a simple understanding how a self-healing can be used in Java Selenium by using simple uh, try-catch blocks and alternative locators. And this is all about this video and always be a rainbow in others cloud. Mm -hmm.